So today we're going to talk crank sets. We all have them on our bikes, but do we have the right one on there? Coming up. This is the art of cycling where we make cycling simple so you can spend more time on your bike and less time inside on your computer like you are right now. This is a crank set. This is one of mine and this is not on my bike right now. Reason being is that I don't like this one because it's a standard crank set. That kind of gives away the title of this video of compact versus standard crank sets. I have a compact crank set on my bike right now. This is a standard crank set and it is not on my bike right now. The only reason I actually bought this standard crank set is because I kind of had to because it had the uh, power meter I was purchasing attached to it. So this half now sits in a box in my closet. The compact versus standard crank set debate has been going on pretty much since compact crank sets came out. Um, a lot of people have very strong opinions on the matter. And I'm just going to give you mine and tell you why I think most people watching this video should probably be on compact crank sets. I live in Florida and it's really, really flat here. The biggest hill I get is pretty much going over a bridge. I'm a relatively strong rider. Um, not anything super amazing, but I've been riding for quite a while. I do like 6,000 miles a year. So I'm pretty fit as a cyclist and I ride on really flat roads. So if somebody can make an argument that they could be on a standard crank set, it's probably me. I don't have any hills to climb, no mountains, fairly fit cyclist, yet I still have my standard crank set here in my hand and not on my bicycle. Reason being is that I believe that cycling is all about your cadence. And there's a lot of science and evidence to back this up. Look at the top cyclists in the world right now. Look at Chris Froome, who's just kind of smoking fools in the Tour de France over and over again. It's all about cadence. Chris Froome is doing a cadence of like 110 revolutions per minute when he's doing his attacks on these climbs. When you have a standard crank set, unless you're Chris Froome, you're not going to be doing a really high cadence or even a kind of high cadence at any point. You have a 39 tooth inner chain ring on a standard crank set. If you have a 28 tooth cassette, which is what most people have, it's gonna give you at like a 90 RPM cadence. You're still gonna be going like 11 or 12 miles per hour, which that's gonna take a lot of power to turn that gear going up even like a five, six, 7% hill. So that's gonna to be tough to do. Most of us can't do that for any kind of sustained period of time. So that's why I prefer to have a compact on my bike just in case I ever get to a position where I need to be able to climb a hill that I can do it. That's one reason to have a compact is that you can keep a good cadence going all the time. Another good reason to have a compact on your bike is it allows you to maintain a straighter chain line more of the time. So this is kind of getting into the whole marginal gain idea that we can thank Team and Sky and Chris Froome for again. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna gain a tiny bit of power, just maybe a few watts, but power is power. Your drivetrain is gonna run smoother. It's gonna not be as loud if you keep your chain line straight. By chain line straight, I mean not cross-chaining. So here's the thing. If you have a standard crank set like this, the average cyclist is gonna spend most of their time in all reality in the little chain ring, but halfway down their cassette in the smaller gears, or in the big chain ring, but halfway up the cassette in the bigger gear. So you're never gonna be kind of living in the middle of your cassette. You're always gonna be at one of the extremes. So you're always gonna have your chain at these angles. It's never really gonna be straight. So you're gonna have a loud drivetrain. Yeah, I mean, it's really marginal, but it is power loss a tiny bit. But the main thing is I just like, don't like it when my bike's making all this noise that it doesn't need to be making. So one advantage of using a compact is that you can spend more time with your chain and the proper gear on your cassette. So on a compact, your big chain ring is a 50 tooth. Most people can turn a 50 tooth chain ring around pretty well and have their bike in a very reasonable gear in the back, pretty much in the middle of the cassette somewhere, which is gonna mean that you're gonna have your chain straight and you're gonna have good power transfer and your bike's gonna run smoothly. This is another advantage is that you have better power transfer good straight chain line, is this gonna be better for your bike overall? This is one more advantage of using a compact over a standard. Now let's talk about some of the disadvantages of using a compact over a standard. Yes, 
Let's just say you can't go as fast with a compact as you can with a standard. This has a 53 tooth outer chain ring compared to the 50 tooth on the compact that's on my bike right now. The outer chain ring, of course, is gonna be your fast chain ring. The bigger it is, the faster you can go. So I'm giving up some top end speed by using a compact. However, if I put it in the 50 tooth chain ring and the 11 in the back, I'm still gonna be able to spin that bad boy up to like 38, 40 miles per hour if I'm doing a nice 9,500 RPM cadence. 40 miles an hour, that's plenty fast. How often am I really gonna go 40 miles per hour? That's really hard to do, to go 40 miles per hour. It might happen when I'm going down a hill, but that's the only time it's really gonna happen is going down a hill. So unless you're doing these group rides where you're maintaining a 35 mile per hour pace all the time, it's not gonna matter for you. Top end speed, you do lose a little bit of it, but not enough that it's really gonna affect you in your day-to-day -day riding. I mean, honestly, even if you have a compact, how often do you really find yourself in your 13 in the back or your 11 or your 12 tooth? It just doesn't happen very often. We very, don't very often go much faster than like 25, 26 miles an hour. Group rides, if you're in a good fast group ride, maybe you'll go 30, but a compact is fine for that. And with a compact, you still have the option to spin a good easy year on a climb and keep your cadence up when you need to. So it's just a much better option for you. So yes, one downside, you lose top end speed, but it's not really something that's gonna affect you on a day-to-day -day basis. The other downside of using a compact is going to be that the gap between your two chain rings is a little bit bigger on a compact. This is true. So a standard is a 53 tooth chain ring and a 39 tooth chain ring. A compact is typically a 50 tooth chain ring and a 34 tooth chain ring. So there's a little bit more of a gap on a compact. What that means is that when you're shifting between your two chain rings back and forth, um, either way, you may have noticed if you've been riding your bike for any amount of time, whenever you jump between your two chain rings, you typically have to do a couple correction shifts um, in the back of your bike just to kind of make up for that difference. At least that's what I do because I makes more sense to do that. And whenever I'm using a compact, you typically have to make maybe one extra correction shift. So whenever I was using my standard, which I used for a while because I had to, um, whenever I shifted, I typically even make like two corrections um, because whenever I was shift, I'm typically wanting a harder or an easier gear anyhow. So I'd shift either direction and then make two correction shifts on the back. With my compact, I typically have to make three correction shifts on the back. Not a huge deal, but it is there. It is a little bit annoying to make that one extra shift on the back. That's the second downside. So the two downsides are gonna be, if you're using a compact, you lose some top end speed, but you do gain the ability to climb much easier and climb much more efficiently because cadence is king when it comes to climbing and you do have that bigger gap between your gears. So you have to be making a few more correction shifts. So which is the correct type crank set for you to be on a compact or a standard? Obviously, if you've not been able to gather yet by this video, I am very much in favor of most of us being on compact crank sets. I think they're much more efficient. I think they are better for our cadence and I think they give us the gears that we need to ride every day. I don't very often need to ride my bike at extremely high speeds over 35, 40 miles per hour, but I do very often find myself riding at speeds between 15 and 30 miles per hour, which is where a compact crank set is perfect. So for the vast majority of us, I think a compact is the way to go. There is this impression that compact crank sets are for people who are weak or amateurs, whatever the case might be. That's just not true. Here's the thing. If you really wanna be a good cyclist, ride the gear that makes you fastest, lets you go the longest, lets you ride the hardest, get up the hill fastest and beat everybody else. Typically that's gonna be the crank set that makes you the most efficient, lets you ride the best cadence, 
most of the time. And for most of us, that's not gonna be a standard because having a 39 tooth inner chain ring is just a lot of times gonna leave you riding a cadence is too low. It's gonna build up that lactic acid in your legs because you won't be able to spin your legs as fast as you need to. You're just gonna go slower. So if you really wanna be pro, ride the gear that'll let you go faster. Ride the gear that'll let you beat everybody else. That's all that matters is your cycling and how you go fastest and how you can enjoy your cycling the most. Now really quickly, there is one other option out there and that's this new like semi-compact or sub-compact, which typically is like a 5236. So it falls like right in the middle. Maybe this is a good option for some people. I'll give it that. Some people just don't want a 34 tooth inner chain ring and some people want to still keep that top end speed. So if you're just not sold on going for a compact, but the standard is not gonna let you climb the way you need to, semi-compact or sub-compact, whatever they call it, it's kind of different depending on where you look, is a good option. A lot of the bikes that you're buying now, the mid to high end bikes are spec'd with a semi-compact crank set now out of the box. It's a good option. I think it's definitely a much better option than the full on standard. Um, I would still recommend a compact for most people. So there we have it. There is my take on the compact versus standard debate. Hopefully this has been informative to you. Hopefully there's been some information that's been new to you and that you can go out there and make the best decision for your style of riding and for your level of fitness. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. If you have any questions or comments about this information, be sure to leave them down in the comments. This is a great subject. Um, a lot of people have opinions on it. It's a great thing to discuss and debate and talk about. So until next time, get out there, put some miles in, and enjoy your riding.